Good morning and happy 4th of July to you. It's good to see all of your red, white, and blue this day. Good to see you. A couple of quick announcements. We will not have Sunday school this Sunday or next Sunday. Um, we will start, Dennis said, oh. Um, but we'll start back up on, Ju on July 18th, and all the classes will be going then. So um, if you have a particular class that you went to prior, check with your teacher and see if y'all are going to meet or if we're going to meet together as one adult class, okay? So just check in with you. If you are interested in being, we have a class for you. It's just a matter of what you would like to study and what would you would like to do. So on July 18th, we'll, we'll crank back up. And we should crank up because that's Sunday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is VBS. And we will have adult classes and kids' classes. You want to go on the church website and sign up so that we know that you're going to come because the meals start at 530, and then classes are from 6 to 8. And a little bit more about that. On the last night, on that Thursday, what better way for us to be sent out after VBS, then to dedicate the cross that's above the steeple here. Because it'll be nighttime, 8.15ish or so, and the cross will be on, and it'll be a visible reminder to us that we are to go out and to serve. So that will happen. And then on July 30th, can I tell you that we are like in full gear around here again? On July 30th, we are going to have a candlelight concert. We want it to be a candlelight dinner. Did I say 31st? 31st. It's on Saturday, right? 31st. 
this is the day. We want it to be a candlelight dinner, but we don't have the meal part worked out yet. If you would like to help with that meal, um, see Ruthie or call the church office. So right now it's a candlelight concert. You get it? Meaning not food yet. So you'll want to sign up. Um, for those of you who don't know, when you leave this building and walk down the steps, there's a corridor that connects the two buildings. We call that the breezeway. Isn't that ingenious? And in the breezeway, there's a sign-up sheet so that we'll know that you're coming to that concert, okay? So there's a sign-up sheet for there. Um, after tomorrow, I will be on vacation from tomorrow until next Monday. So next Sunday, um, I won't be here. Um, we will have a singing sermon that day. So we'll sing through the sermon for next Sunday. So if you need me, um, call Ronnie. And then Ronnie, in turn, will call the office or whoever else needs to be notified. Um, Nathan Gragg is the pastor at Zion. And since I covered for him two weeks ago, he's covering for me this week. So if something happens, um, we have that connection that Nathan will be covering for me. So today is the first Sunday in July. And what we said was the first Sunday in July, we would start coming forward for communion. So what we're going to do is I will be standing here and give you the bread. And then depending on which side you are seated in, you'll just um, receive communion from either side here, from Susan or Marion, and then return to your, uh, your seats by the side aisles. So coming up makes it a little tricky. Y'all are going to have to merge. Some of y'all work for the DOT and you understand what that means. You just merge into one line as you come up and you receive the bread and the wine, okay? Mary, and in case DOT, they might need to know what merge means. So if you would educate them when they come up. But I think we can handle it, don't you? I think we can handle it. Let's see. That's my list of announcements. I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's all. But what I want to say to you is today we celebrate Independence Day. But we are so dependent on God. So let us continue to prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs>
should get us going. Let us stand and face the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. As broken children, we begin worshiping by acknowledging our sinfulness and asking for God's forgiveness. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the miracle worker, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and you are loved into abundant life. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also
pray together. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Ezekiel. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me, he said to me, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. There and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are imprudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Second reading is from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was called up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but of, on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weakness. But if you wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that they, has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they looked and they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could de do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and he cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. 
So they went out and they proclaimed all that they should repent. These disciples cast out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and they cured them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Students, I think when you came in this morning, you got a necklace, right, Paisley? You got a necklace and a flag, right? So the rest of you older kids, when y'all leave, there's some necklaces back there if you want one. So the necklace says on it, it has some letters, and it says USA, and it has a bunch of stars. Because today, it's 4th of July, and we come together, Paisley, we come together for Independence Day. You can shake it. Can you twirl it? Yeah, don't hit anybody. Sorry, Melanie, that was your head. <laughs> So today we, we learned that we are independent, like we are an independent country. But you know what? We are so dependent on God. We drop to our knees and we raise our hands and we pray to God that God keep us and protect us and, and loves us. So can we pray? Let us pray. God, we thank you for this Independence Day, and we give you thanks that you continue to bless the United States of America. May you continue to protect us and to give us peace and give us patience, and may you root out all evil and those things that seek to destroy your children in this country. We give you thanks that you love us, and we give you thanks that you never abandon us, and we pray this in Jesus' name, and all God's children say... Amen. Hey, Paisley, I'm going to wear my necklace too, okay? You have yours on. Will you pray the prayer of preparation with me? Holy God, you have a word for me today. Make my heart soft and plant your word in me in order that it may bear fruit in your kingdom. Amen. So all of us here today have been around some child at some point, and you heard this, I just do that myself, right? Because when children are born, they are dependent on us to do everything. Pick them up, give them a bottle, feed them, change them, move them. Right? They are totally dependent. We were totally dependent on somebody at some point to do all those things. And then eventually we want to become independent. And sometimes we call that the terrible twos. Right? And then sometimes terrible twos go on to be threes and fours and 17-year-olds. But we want to be independent and as parents, we want to raise our children to be independent one day, right? To get out of the basement, like to go and get your own house. And we want you to be independent and we want you to, to thrive. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way, does it? Before my mom died, things would happen. I couldn't wait to call her. Like, we want to be independent, but at the same time, we want to be dependent, and we want to be loved, and we want to be cherished. So put yourself in these disciples' sandals today. They have been walking with Jesus, and they've seen Jesus go in and out of synagogues. They have seen him cure people, heal people, touch people, let people touch their cloak. And, and be healed. Those are the things that they have seen. But don't we do the same thing to our own children? None of us expect a child to graduate high school and go start doing surgery, do we? Because we don't want to be the patient. But none of us expect that, right? We expect to be trained and the things that we have seen in life are the things that we are able to go do sometime. So today, the disciples have been walking, and they are familiar with these things that Jesus has been doing. And Jesus is about to send them out to do those things. 
that they've already experienced. He's not asking them to do anything that they haven't already seen. You see, Jesus is literally on a mission. At the end of service, um, these past couple of Sundays, and we'll continue it, we, we say this, that we are God's people on a mission, that we have been gathered, we have been fed, and we have been sent into the world to make a difference. You know where I got that from? This text. Because we are, right? We come and we, we, are gather, we gather around the font and around the meal and we are fed and we are nourished and we are sent back out to make a difference. Because you have seen what God's difference makes in your own life and we go to share that out into the world where people have no idea what we're talking about, Don't, do they? And we know that because it doesn't take us but about two minutes on the news to find out that people don't know who Jesus is yet. Amen? So we are gathered and we are fed and then we are sent. That's what Jesus did to the disciples today. Did Jesus tell them, and you go out there and you won't ever incur a single problem. Everybody's going to love you and they're going to be so happy to hear you and they're going to hear you and they're going to listen to you. Did he say that to them? No. As a matter of fact, he told them, when you go out there, you stay at the same house and stay there as long as they will listen to you. But if they don't listen to you, did anybody say, pick up the Bible and just beat them over the head with the scroll? He said, no, just take off your shoes, shake out the sand, and go. Because, see, God has already prepared people out there to hear the good news. It's our responsibility to go share it. To go share that good news. And that's what he's telling disciples. There are people out there who are ready to hear this. Remember the crowds were so big and so tight that they were pressing in on people, on Jesus. And the crowds were just so big. So now Jesus is saying, you, you go out and you go meet them where they are. And you heal and you touch and you make them well. That's what we are to do, to go out and to meet people where they are and tell them the good news. Some of us, some of us are afraid to do that, aren't we? Yeah. So, you know what we're going to do today on this Independence Day? You are going to be, de you are going to be independent when you leave here because you're going to know what to say. You know what you have to tell people? I don't know the whole story about Jesus, but I know one thing's for sure. He loves you, Frank. And buddy, Jesus loves you. And you know what? I invite you to come be a part of a community that knows what Jesus' love and grace and mercy looks like. And they come. And when they come into the sanctuary, we welcome them. We give them a visitor bag, nice little cups in it. We give them a visitor bag, and we tell him, you know what? We knew you were coming. Amen? So all of you who are visitors today, we've known that y'all were coming. We didn't have to go scramble and get you a bag. We knew that you were coming. Because God has laid on our hearts a warm and welcome and inviting place for you to come to. So if you're in town, just passing through, or whatever, we expected you. And we would love to continue to be in community with you and continue to teach you and to be a part of God's mission that we go back out into the world. So welcome. Welcome to a place that loves and cherishes and, and loves community. Because sometimes... We all have to be reminded that we have to keep the focus. That we really aren't here just to be fed and just to see each other. But the third part is to go share. And sometimes we just have to be reminded that we are to go and to share and be in community outside. And that sometimes you're going to invite people and invite people and invite people and invite people and they don't come 
but then maybe one day they come. Maybe their hearts are ready and God has laid on their hearts and softened their hearts to come hear his, his word here. Jesus did this for the disciples, and we as a faithful community do that for one another. One of the best things about it is you don't have to go alone. Did Jesus send people out by themselves? Peter, okay, you go to Chapin, and John, you head over to Casey. Did he say that? He sent them two by two. He sent them together to go share. We are to do ministry together. Together as we go out and we share God's love and his grace and his mercy. Jesus has a mission for us. To share his love and to bring others into community so that the community continues to grow. Because as we grow, we send more people out to fill God's pews in this place. No tapes anymore, no social distancing, no signs that say Jesus was here and you can't sit here. Like, the place is open. We are open to love and to share and to grow and to be in God's mercy. So let us continue this day. As dependent as we are on Jesus, we simply share that with one another. That on Independence Day, we want to be independent. We want to do that by myself. But we're not called to do it by ourselves. We're called to do it with one another. So let this community say amen. Amen. <laughs>
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and language, languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Today, we pray for our neighboring church, Emmanuel Lutheran. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death, and you have rescued us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who are fearful and bring wholeness to those in need. We bring before you members of this community, Patricia Backman, Alberta Berry, Hazel Bacchus, Lyle Bacchus, Nell Buff, Margie Hook, Janara Kaiser, Reverend Everett Price, June Roof, Tom Roof, Lena Wessinger, we also bring before you and ask for healing powers for Buddy Heydrich, Joe Leach, Jane Sexton, Mary Frances Cease, Jimmy Maddox, and Jerry Price. And God, our list goes on. So now hear those names that we say out loud in this community, those that we enter into the chat lines online, and those that we hold quiet in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us toward freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty and justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. You may be seated. As part of our worship, we give back to God, give back to God those things that he has already given us as we share part of our offerings this day. So if you're worshiping online, you're welcome to, to contribute toward this congregation's ministry by giving online, or you can send a check in the mail. But however it is that you give back, we give back to God at this time.
We give thanks for these gifts and we pray together. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
And so it was. And the night when she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So come, there is more than enough for all, so come and be fed at this meal. Jerry, the healing power of God broken for you. darkest hour when I cannot breathe fear is on my chest the weight of the world on me everything is crashing down everything I have known when I wonder
above all the lies I know you can make a way I have seen giants fall I have seen mountains move I have seen waters part because of you You were- 
please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, you have fed us and you have nourished us, and we are going to go to this world and make a difference. So we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for freedoms and independence, knowing that we are truly and completely dependent on your love and your grace and your mercy. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. turn to the doors of the sanctuary. We are God's people on a mission. We have gathered. We have been fed. Now we go out to make a difference in the world. Amen.